So Greg Garza is with us to uh, kick off things on Friday with the Friday free kick. And uh, I saw you trying to properly hydrate, sir, before uh, before we started the segment. There's no there is no shame in properly hydrating live on the air. Always has to be usually see me with the coffee. I think I've had too much coffee. And this is I, I hate getting old because I have a tooth. I had my first cavity. Uh oh, I'm going to say maybe two months ago. OK, first cavity in my life ever. I'm like wow. super like super super organized about just always keeping clean and dude I've, i feel like I, I have another tooth that's aching the past couple of days so gosh man i hate getting old no 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 well yeah and that's the thing is that we always sit here and say that you're you're just you're just getting uh what is what is it it's not uh you're keeping the level of maturity that you have. Yeah. You're not just, you're not just getting, you're not just, you're not getting older in the sense of, you know, the, the driver's license or anything. It's yeah. just, you know, that's just a number and you get to act as young as you wish. And uh, the, the problems that we have when we're like eight, 10 and 12, uh, Greg is finally having with his teeth. Um, so, so, all right. So let me, let me go here since, since you've already discussed this. All right. So, you think you've had, you think you're having too much coffee and you think that was the root, the root cause to, uh, to borrow. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's, I just, I don't feel like drinking anything that's really high right now. So that's, uh, ah. yeah, yeah. Sensitive, sensitive teeth right now. But ah. I mean, it's like, I haven't done, I haven't done anything that's different, right? My whole entire life. I floss every day, brush three times a day, mouthwash two times a day. So it's just, it's frustrating. Uh, it's frustrating going through it. Uh, well, yeah, considering that I got to have, uh, and I know that this is fantastic radio and TV, but yeah, I got my first filling, I got my first cap uh, about a, about six months ago. So I'm now like completely and totally anal retentive about flossing and all this. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Um, when it and we talked we talked a little bit about this in the past, but the the generational divide that you have with your mentees. I mean, not, not everyone is, not everyone you're mentoring is, you know, in their you know early thirties, you know, it's, you're talking about teenagers and things, how much studying and how much, how much digging do you have to do? How much, I guess, how much, whether it's film study or trying to talk to peers and things like that, when it comes to making sure that you are getting the message across to your mentees in ways that they understand and ways that you are comfortable in explaining things. How much research do you have, have you done to make sure that you're getting the message out the right way with those that are younger than you? That's, that's a great question. I think it's more so of just having the, the talent to do so. Um, I, I think Mike and I are very good in getting our message across. And I think it's more so with just experience. Um, it's like in everything I tell kids, the first time I had my first motivational speech at some middle school, it was probably the worst thing ever. And it probably wasn't as great as I would be doing it now. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's, it's research. I think it's just experience. I think it's experience of seeing new things and bringing them to light. And whether it be from books that we read or whether it be from, uh, motivational videos that we see, um, you know, I, I think there's, there's a lot of things that Mike and I have created on our own, obviously from the experience of learning from others. And I think that's the beauty of mentorship, right? You, you get to pass the baton and you get to kind of help these kids understand new things that maybe they've never heard before and put it into a perspective to help them the best way possible on and off the field. Uh, but I do think it's, uh, and you and I have talked about this before, just watching players, watching certain players. I, I, I'm not, I'm not crazed about the Tiago Almadas or the guys that are just like super flashy. And uh, you know, that's, that's something for me back in my career. I mean, I love him as a player. And I use him all the time as this example because he's such a flashy player, but I, I like watching the experienced players. I like watching the, the guys who uh, don't do anything too fancy, but are able to not only survive and get by, but just that you can tell that they play with a lot of experience. Um, those are the type of players that I enjoy watching um, because it, it, it shows it shows that over the years they've learned how to really make their mark in things. 
um, and, and, it, and it helps. And you hope that the players like Miggy and like Tiago that over time they will gain that experience. They will lose they will lose certain aspects of their game that allow them to be flashy now when they get older. And so uh, uh, what, what is their adaptability level like whenever they get older to understand uh, how, how to how to continue to still be successful? Matty Cruz with uh, Greg Garza here for the Friday Free Kick discussing mentoring soccer and how they interact. Matty, your first question for Greg today. I think this is my first time actually being a part it of is. the so it's fine. Yeah. It is. It I, is. So my, de- my debut. Nice this is great. To, nice to virtually meet you. I don't nice think we've met in person either. No, we have not. We have not. Yeah. I mean, l- listen, I, I was telling John and Jason even before, like, I have been a fan of Atlanta United since the inaugural season. So it, it, my family, whenever it's Friday, they're always like, did you get to talk to Greg and Parky today? And I was like, I did. I wasn't, I wasn't talking, but I was there, like, in the background. But... Uh, I think my, my question is like w- when you're developing young players and you're really trying to find that route, what are, what is your advice to young kids who are trying to find who they are going to be as a player when they are in their sport? Cause I feel like it's such a huge, it, it's a huge identity to kind of be your own person and be your own player. So how do you kind of translate that with your mentoring and trying to help give the kids like their own identity that's that's a great question um i think for 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 mike and i no matter what sport some of these kids play it is helping them just create that character that goes behind um who they who they essentially are i think it's building that root building those roots and and, and that foundation to allow them to realize what their pathway to success may be. And I, I, honestly, that has nothing to do with sport. It just has everything to do with just their their character and their traits um, of, of what goes behind everything that they do. And w- one thing that I really, really try to pinpoint with a lot of kids is just creating good habits, good routines, good rituals, Uh, That's something that I extremely focus on and is a huge focal point for most kids is just what good habits do they have and how to try and create that organization in their everyday lives, because that'll transfer over to the sport that they play um, and and, and it will help them in in life in general. So um, I think as organized as we can be as people, I think if you think if you look at successful entrepreneurs or if you look at successful um, just people in general, they are very organized people. So I think it's just trying to have them have an open mind uh, of understanding how to, whether they aren't organized, kind of create that mindset shift and then uh, kind of keep the consistency going from there. How long did it take you to be consistent in your messaging, be consistent with your approach? Uh, I know that you like to journal a lot and uh, you'll take your notes from that and try to apply it going forward. But how long did it take you through all of your note taking and experience and all these kinds of things to come up with that consistent idea, the consistent approach and be comfortable with, OK, I think that this will be the way that I can do this and build from that. How long did that take? I think Mike and I were able to, to spitball so many ideas that we and we and we constantly uh, we constantly write things down in our docs, right, in our Word docs in our Google Docs, um, there are always ways, there are always ways to continue to learn and grow um, and be open-minded. And we had a, we had a meeting, Mike and I had a meeting two days ago with a, with a, with a marketing agency, with a really successful marketing agency. And the first thing they said is they said, are you, are you guys comfortable with us giving some, uh, you know, some advice? about what you guys do and everything you guys do, because we love the message. We love what you guys do. We feel like it can be something much greater than maybe what it already is. And Mike and I answered at the exact same time. I mean, we just said, bring it on, right? Our whole entire lives were based off criticism. If you really think about it, right? It's like being a professional athlete, you are criticized in what you do every single day. You are criticized. That, that word for me is just, is a big word. 
And kids are look at that word and they're like, well, I don't do well with criticism. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't do well with somebody trying to fix things for me or, uh, and, and that's, that's the beauty of, I think, spitballing so many ideas is that Mike and I are also apt to learn different ways and, and find different paths and avenues to uh, continue to create exercises and opportunities for these kids to, uh, to, to, to learn. Somebody said criticized and critiqued. I say criticize, right? Because uh, I would finish a game and the first thing that most people and so probably a lot of players do are to go on Twitter and look at your rating, right? That's, that's, I mean, in a way you are being critiqued, but I guarantee you, if I were to look at any rating of any player, there's going to be some sort of criticism within there. This guy got a seven out of 10 today, but you know, there's something there that he should have done better. That's being, that's being criticized. Um, in my personal opinion, Maddie, go for it. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, that brings up a good point. Just like, I think criticism as well. How do you, uh, kids obviously mention they don't like being critiqued. They don't like being criticized at all. How do you talk to them about the importance of criticism and how it can help improve them, not even just as a player, but as a person, as they continue out through their journey? Yeah. Um, Mike, Mike always says a great, a great quote and it's not ours but just to uh just only accept criticism from someone you would take advice from and uh that's that's a huge one i think for even any professional athlete to really understand and i mean somebody said constructive criticism up there right that there's there's that to me is constructive criticism when it does come from someone that that you would take advice from so um when, when there is criticism that's not going to help you and not going to push you forward and it's someone maybe just uh, in, in kids lingo these days, right? Uh, talking trash or, or, or selling, right? That they use all the time. Yeah. Um, then, then, it, then it should mean nothing. And I think uh, for, for us, we, we, want, we want to, just a, an example for the marketing agency, these are people that we want to learn from. These are people that we would definitely take advice about growing um, our, our, our company and, and our business. So, uh, of course, all the criticism because we want to learn from them and, and understand uh, what's best. When it comes to criticism, and I know that the the peers, these, I mean, and I think it's fairly consistent. Peers have the most biting criticism for whatever reason. You know, it could be the their their ego makes them feel better about themselves if they're the one in the room that sits there and gives you the most biting criticism and puts you down that much faster when internally you may feel threatened by what they're doing and they're being more successful than you. So it's a, a natural impulse to sit there and lash out and sit there and say something as biting and cutting as possible and to, to be that part of a, a conversation among peers. Was it the same way for you when you were starting out in the game uh, as an athlete where, you know, if you were crushing it and someone wasn't, were there those same kind of things like, oh, you, you know, you didn't do that well today, those kinds of things? Is that, has that been a constant in your observations where uh, the biting criticism from peers was there when you were starting in addition to what we're hearing today from younger athletes? I don't I don't. I don't, I don't really think so. I think, I think most, I think most athletes at that level do a pretty good job of holding themselves accountable. Mm -hmm. you're, you're at that level to begin with. So, um, you better be pretty darn good at self-assessing yeah. and understanding the situation and that there's no better person to look at in the mirror than, than yourself. So, um, in those ways, I don't feel like at least in my career, I had a lot of players that would really look towards constructive criticism for me. I think it came more so from coaches and, um, you know, people, people that I, I had in my corner uh, that, that, that would want to see me grow and help me get to that next level or phase within my career. 
but were there were, but were there those also that might have been in your peer group that tried to put you down and tried to have you either not listen or try to listen to other voices maybe in the back of your head to create self doubt? Did that exist? I think probably more so today within kids yeah. than anything. Yeah. Um, I see it a lot within my mentees sometimes where they are doubting their self or they have a, a bout of confidence to where, to where it's maybe they heard somebody speaking and saying, Hey, this kid didn't have a good game today. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think at the end of the day, that's that moment to where you say, well, is, is that, is that criticism coming from someone you would take advice from? Would you, would you take advice from that kid about playing your position? And the answer is always going to be no. Um, you know, it's the good old, the good old saying of just, you're playing in Philly or you're playing in New York or you're playing in, I always use the Northeast because I feel like those are the most <laughs> obnoxious fans. Um, but you know, they're, they're yelling all these different things out from the, from the sidelines and especially being a left back or somebody who plays out wide every throw in that you have, um, you hear some pretty bizarre things. Oh, and, and so it's, you could easily in those moments, I think it just, it, it always kind of made me laugh because you could always just really turn around and just be like, here, you want to, you want to hop in? Scoreboard. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or do you just want to hop in, just hop in right now and tell me how you do. Um, but I think yeah, that's, that's always going to the back of your mind. Whereas if it's someone that you really would take advice from, um, I, I was perfectly fine with Tata really getting on to me or, um, specifically I remember the very first game that we played in 2018 season where we played Houston. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I think that was a huge wake up call for us. But I remember there was a play to where, uh, goose goose played me a long ball and it was a very difficult ball. And I headed it back to LGP LGP gave the ball away from right there. And then they scored. Mm. I think it was like maybe like the second or third goal. Yeah. Um, and I remember in that video room the day after Tata just ripped me to pieces in front of everyone. Um, and then he pulled me after the video and showed me it again because I was in disagreement. I felt like I did the, I felt like I did the, uh, the, the simple thing to keep, keep the ball, keep possession. Um, and, and although it was somebody else who had made the mistake, I think that was a level of expectation and pressure that he had put on me to want me to even try new things and be better. Um, and, and it just gave me all these different scenarios of things that I could have done to maybe try and play forward and not, and not, uh, you know, and not maybe play simple in those moments. Whereas most coaches would say, Hey, you know, you did the simple thing, uh, and, and this guy's fault, but he ripped into me because he thought I could have maybe been a little bit more creative with the play. Hmm. And uh, so, and so I think that, that in a way it's like, man, that, that was a harsh bit of criticism because it's in front of everybody. It's ripping me to pieces, but you know what? This guy's right, man. Like I, I, I am a creative player. I do have an outstanding technical ability. I am able to receive a ball from 50 yards in the air, wherever it's coming from. And still, you know, control it on a dime. That's that's that that it really allows you to understand. Okay, this guy, this guy is pushing me to realize that there are things that I can hold myself to a higher standard. Um, and I think that's uh, that's that's uh, that's that's a huge stepping stone for a lot of players. But it can also be something to where I think, in my mentality, it, it pushed me forward rather than rip me rip me apart in those moments to whereas other players, it could maybe do the opposite. Cause it opened a door for you to another way of approaching a situation. Yeah. And I think that just goes from the level of respect of this is someone I would take advice from. This guy has coached and played at the highest level um, and is idolized by so many people from his playing career and is idolized by so many people in his coaching career that heck yeah, man, rip into me, right? It's uh, a rip into me. If there's a moment to where you feel like I could do so much better because that just sets my bar a lot higher. And you know what? I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out today. And the next time Goose gives me a ball like that in our possession drill, I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to try and be more creative. Maddie, go for it with Greg Garza here on the Friday free kick. 
I think one of the things that I I got the chance to talk to Derek Williams a little bit about just the communication style on the field, especially being in that back line almost. Um, when you're talking to players and you're talking to people, like when you're giving criticism, when you're relaying sort of those ideas of what maybe they could have done better and how they could have improved in this moment, how do you balance that in terms of what other people's communication style is if they like to be, I don't want to say yelled at, but if they like to be laid into and that makes them fired up, or if maybe a little bit of like a, Hey, get up, let's keep going. Like, how do you kind of distinguish that? Those are, those are all personal traits and leadership qualities that Mike and I speak about all the time. Um, Michael Parker's is look, I, I would say he's probably one of the best captains I've played under. Um, I think, it's, a, it's between him and, and, and my captain that I played with in, in Club Tijuana, um, who also did a great job. Uh, Parky, they're both completely different. Um, Parky was able to understand the different types of personalities within every room and every locker room and on the field and understood that he could talk to me in a certain way that he couldn't talk to Julian Gressel. Right. Um, that, that, that to me is absolute leadership quality to where, for example, Brad Guzan is going to talk to everybody the exact same way. Right. Brad is going to talk to everybody the exact same way because Brad is on, well, I'm just going to say snorting Red Bull instead of something else, <laughs> but, uh, a thousand miles an hour, yeah. um, to where he's just always providing information and he's intense and he's, it's just the way he is. Um, and, and Parky is such a visual, I, I don't know if you can throw analytical person in there as well. Like he's, he studies, he studies different types of people on the field to best lead them, mm -hmm. um, in the right way. Um, Joseph is all, people don't understand how good a leader Joseph is. And although Joseph People say, well, Joseph rips into people and would cuss people out and would just throw up his hands. And but in a way, that was his that was his leading in expecting so much more from you. Mm -hmm. And if there was a cross that I didn't give well and he just absolutely ripped into me and was so ticked off and so mad, um, it, it was a way to tell me one of my best assets and traits within my game is crossing. Like I know I need to be better and he should be ticked off. Um, and it's, the, those are the, those are the, those are the things that I think of when I think about what you just asked. Maddie is, is, is understanding different types of personalities and the best leaders do that. Um, I think being a, being a, a former player, and understanding that now using that experience and knowledge with, with everyone, I think goes more towards, and, and I got asked this, I think when I was with Jason the other day um, at the Atlanta United, I, it was good to see you, John, there. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it, was, it was a question that he asked me and he said, what do you get out of mentoring? And that was a really interesting question because it was uh, – it, it was, it was very, you know, it was a broad question. And, and I said, you know what, for me, it's not, it's not watching these kids grow up. That's the inevitable. Um, the inevitable is watching these kids grow up. They're going to grow up. I don't know how they're going to grow up. I don't know how tall they're going to be. I don't know. If they're going to have a beard, right? It doesn't, I don't know if they're going to be, um, you know, what, what, what they're going to look like physically, right? Boy, girl, doesn't matter. Um, but the coolest thing for me, I think what I get out of mentoring, maybe I've mentioned this before, but is just watching these kids mature. And so I, I take that back towards the level of maturity and how to receive criticism or how to give criticism um, when you are playing the game and how it's coming from others. It, it's based off your level of maturity. And uh, that's, that's, a, that's a huge piece. Uh, that's a huge component of it as well. Another couple of minutes here with Greg Garza on the Friday free kick here and our friends at Beyond Goals Mentoring at BG Mentoring on the 280 character app. Yes, hydrate, sir. Properly hydrate. We're in the home stretch. 
uh, because it, it comes down to investment. And I mean that not in the financial sense, but in the emotional and physical sense. We're, we're invested in what we're doing, but it comes across in different ways where you, you have Tata and his managerial style. You have Joseph and his leadership style. You have Brad and his leadership style. You have Parky and his. They're coming at you from different ideas and dimensions and angles, but it's because they're invested in what they're doing. And that's why they're presenting it in those ways. They have, you know, it is part of their personality, but it's because they're invested. They see you're invested and they want the everyone that's attached to this to have the, the most successful experience possible in a situation like this. We uh, don't steal my quote. OK, I don't steal my quote. But the best coaches, the best coaches are not coaches. They, they are managers, right? Yes, there is a difference. Best coaches are not coaches. They are managers. Mm -hmm. right? um, the best coaches I ever had in my whole entire career, they were managers. They knew how to manage the emotions, uh, the frustrations, the camaraderie, the brotherhood, uh, all these different things. They were managers to a sense that they built championship teams. There are a lot of coaches out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. There are a lot of coaches out there. There are very few managers. And uh, that, that, that is my personal opinion, that the best coaches are great, man. Look at, look at any sport. Pick, pick a sport, right? Okay. Look at the best coaches that have ever coached, right? They, they might be somewhat, and it's, they might be somewhat really good tacticians. And I think Tata had a style of, play that was you know unique and different and but he managed the team so well to get the best out of every single person emotionally physically um you know in different ways right so you look at that coach for example um my success and i i, I think it's always interesting to use your personal success but my success in club tijuana when we won the championship there we we honestly, on paper, had the worst team in the league, on paper. Had all rejects, people who were loaned out from different clubs, and we just blew it out of the water. And it was because of our manager. He was, he was such a good manager. He got the best out of every single player and did, did so well with that. Um, it takes special and elite types of personalities, which we've talked about before, but um, there's a lot of combination of, 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 of great things. So no doubt about it. Uh, what's the latest with beyond goals mentory? Same old, same old continuing trying to, uh, grow the game the best way possible. Um, a lot of unique opportunities coming up in the future. Mike and I love what we do. Like we always say it's, uh, this was, this was a project for us in the beginning and something that I think we can really have a, a safe place to say that it's, it's, it's continuously growing. It's definitely a grind. Um, if, if I think most people probably think that and Parky and I had this conversation even yesterday, most people, as pe people think as a professional athlete, when you finish something, you just want to step into the easiest thing possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I can see why, right? Because yeah. most players, where do they lead to? They lead to becoming a coach. Um, because it's an easy buy-in because you've been used to it for so long. Um, it's really hard to step into something that is maybe not in your comfort zone. And I think for Parky and I, this, this is learning business and learning analytics and learning so many different things that I think we have really taken time to, to build. Um, it, it's, it's been, it's been a constant grind. It's 24 seven, always learning and, and, and reading and, um, providing new information and coming up with different ideas on how to grow beyond goals. Uh, but I'm sure him and I would not, would not have it any other way. Absolutely. And that's why we like to, to check in on the journey every single week that you and Parky can drop in and, and we all take the, the growth steps together. Greg, my friend, it's always great to see you. Great to see you out in the field. Great to see you here on Fridays and we will catch up with you soon. And you can keep updating us and let us know about all the topics that pop into my head every single day that I've got to ask Greg and I write down so we can catch up with only one or two of them 
on a Friday. Thanks for hanging out, my friend. Sounds good. Yeah, Matty, uh, thanks for hanging out with us as well. Feel free to hang out. John, I always tell you, man, feel free to bring other people. Oh, yeah. What, no, who, do we have, who do we have this weekend, by the way? Uh, what? With, uh, with Atlanta, it's up yeah. going, going up to Chicago. Okay. So it is. Uh, I was just there a couple weeks ago. Possibly shit. Yeah, when you were in a hotel when you did the segment with us. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, possibly shaking hands with uh, Andrew Gutman and because uh, Goot was on the bench last time out and okay. he's recovering from an injury. So, uh, yeah, Land United on the road in Soldier Field, and that'll be on Saturday night. So that's ne that's next up for the first team, and uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, got to get some points on the road. For sure. Most All definitely. right. All right. See you guys. Be well. All right. So there's Greg, and Greg's going to go hydrate and do other things. And uh, – Properly hydrate, 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 hydrate. It's one of the things I've learned from Greg. Make sure that you're properly hydrated when you're doing these segments. And so well, I'm uh, caffeinated. So yes, I'm the opposite. Well, I, well, and for me, I was trying to figure out, okay, you know, how can I, you know, try and caffeinate and, and get things figured out? But, uh, you know, the internet kind of stepped in the way. So I uh, had to get all that squared away this morning. So no. <laughs> <laughs> so Abby's volunteering to crash. I know that Bart would crash given the opportunity. There are a lot of folks. Uh, so what did you think about your first uh, Friday free kick with Greg Garza? Now you can actually tell your parents that you were on the show with Greg Garza. 